Uh, we're going to read uh, a bit from Psalm 42 today, but we're actually going to read um, what's in our sort of family devotional book to start with, um, which Alana listens to occasionally. Uh, so Rona's going to read that, and then I'm going to think a little bit more about the passage. So Rona. It's called Talk to Yourself. Why are people usually unhappy? David Martin Lloyd-Jones said it's because people are listening to themselves instead of talking to themselves. When you wake up in the morning, you can listen to whatever your thoughts are telling you. Maybe they are reminding you of something bad you did the day before. Maybe they are making you scared of something you have to do tomorrow. You can listen and feel horrible. Or you can talk back. You can remind yourself of what is true and who you are and who God is and what he has done. You can say something like, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. Psalm 42 verse 11. Are you listening to yourself today or talking to yourself? Thank you. Alana obviously wasn't listening or talking at that point. But um, Psalm 42.11 uh, says this um, in the NIV. Why, I, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. Uh, and that's really what we were thinking about just now. Um, this is David um, talking to himself. Uh, he's in a situation where he feels down uh, and he has every right to feel down. If you look at the previous two verses, verses nine and ten, um, it's clear that he is not in a good situation. Um, verse nine, uh, he is oppressed by his enemies. Verse ten, his bones suffer mortal agony. His foes taunt him. They say to him all day long, where is your God? So David has every right to feel downcast. Uh, he is in an awful situation. Uh, he feels like his body is decaying. He feels like he's being mocked and ridiculed. Uh, and he feels like people have no respect for his God. And I'm sure uh, that all of us can uh, appreciate how David is feeling. We're all now in a situation where we feel isolated uh, we feel out of touch, we feel alone. Um, we might have sicknesses and illnesses that are getting us down, that are getting on top of us. And it's perfectly normal and natural uh, to feel downcast. Uh, and that's what David is saying, saying, I am downcast. Why, my soul, are you downcast? It's odd that he's asking that question because he's already told us in the previous verses exactly why he's feeling so bad. But he is talking to himself so that he can address the fears and the issues that he's facing. Uh, and that's such an important reminder to us, not to dwell on our feelings, not to um, allow our feelings to rule us and control us, uh, but to talk to our feelings, to speak to them, uh, to talk to ourselves, to try and, try and analyse what it is that's going on in our hearts and in our minds. Uh, and what is David's antidote? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. See, David says the, the antidote to this downcast soul, to this disturbed spirit, the antidote to fear, the antidote to worry, uh, is to not look to your problems, but to look to your God. See, David knew that, that we have a God who is far and above uh, all these situations that we experience. We think of Isaiah chapter 6, uh, where Isaiah is in the temple and he has a vision of God. Now, the temple was uh, God's dwelling place for the Israelites. This is where God dwelt. But when Isaiah saw God, it's, he said that the, that the, uh, the, the, the trim of his robe, just the very end of his robe, filled the temple. See, the Israelites thought that God lived in this little temple, that this was his dwelling place, but just the just the, 
just the tip of his robe could fill the whole temple. And when he saw the majesty and the power of God, Isaiah was completely overwhelmed. Just like David, when Isaiah looked to God, he saw how much greater and how much more glorious he was. We think back to our series that we've just done in Revelation. Um, and there we see in a world of chaos and confusion and disorder, we see at the centre of everything that there is a throne and there is a God who sits upon it. That's why we put our hope in God, because he is mighty, he is powerful and he is in control. And this is the encouragement. We put our hope in God for we will yet praise him. The days of, of downcast souls and disturbed spirits do not last. Uh, they will not go on forever. There will be a day when we will praise God. And we can praise God. He, he is there with us in the midst of our troubles and our downcast souls. We know that because not only uh, David then says in the end of verse 11, he is our saviour and our God. Why are you downcast when actually you can put your hope in a God who is mighty, who is powerful, uh, but who is gracious and merciful, who has saved us and who has rescued us? We know we have a God who cares because we look to the cross and we see a God who loves and gave so that our sin can be forgiven and dealt with. And that's the great encouragement. If we are feeling downcast, if we are feeling disturbed, we don't look in ourselves, we don't look and dwell on our feelings. We speak to ourselves and tell ourselves to look to God, to put our hope and our trust in him. And the promise is that we will praise him in this life or in the life to come. He is the one who has rescued and blessed us. He is the one who is in control of all these situations. He is the one who is worthy of all our hope and adoration. So, if we are feeling downcast, well, uh, you have a kindred spirit in David. And Psalm uh, 42 is not the only psalm where he speaks of his troubles and his strife. Uh, the psalm is full of people who, who feel like there is too much going on, it's overwhelming. So meditate on them, look to them. And their answer is always the same, that there is a God who can be trusted, a God who can be depended upon. And so we look again at the, the Gospels and we see the man, Jesus, the Son of God, who willingly stepped into this world to save, to rescue, and to come very close to us. And again, uh, look again at the book of Revelation. Go through the series on the website again and see uh, that whatever is going on in this world, whatever it looks like, uh, whatever the chaos and disorder, there is a God who sits on the throne, who has control over everything. And he will keep us and he will protect us through this day and through the days to come. And when we go and stand before him, we can have hope because he has cleansed us from our sin. He has brought us into his family and he will save us on the day of wrath. So why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. Look to him who is mighty, who is in control. And who loves us. Let's just pray. Father there is much to trouble us at this time. There is much to worry us. And yet Father we know. That you are in control. Whatever we see around us. Whatever we think is going on. Uh, there is a throne at the centre of the universe. And you are firmly seated upon it. There is nowhere that you cannot go. There is nowhere that you cannot be. We might feel alone, but we know that you are with us. We might feel isolated, but you are dwelling amongst us every single second of every single day. And you are mighty and powerful. You are loving and you are gracious. You have saved and rescued and you will preserve us until you bring us to be back with you in your glory, in your home. 
in that glorious new heaven and new earth that awaits all who trust in you. Father, help us to be looking to your cross, to your glory, to the cross of Jesus Christ. May it sustain us through these difficult days, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.